Welcome back to topic 32 for Algebra 1 Compound Interest. In part 2, we're going to explore three different examples involving compound interest and calculating that value. Example number 1. Levon deposits $1,000 in an account that earns 18% interest compounded quarterly. Rounding to the nearest dollar, what will be the balance after three years? So here, right off the bat, I'm going to start with my formula. We know my formula is A equals P times 1 plus R divided by N to the NT power. It's going to be repetitive, but you're going to get the hang of it, I promise. So normally in word problems, I like to start off with cubes. Circling the number, underlining the question, boxing any important words. And we can do that here, but specifically with compound interest problems, because I have so many variables, I like to identify what value I'm going to plug into my variable. And that's kind of combined with cubes. So A, P, R, N, and T. Now A is the final amount. Do we know what Levon has after three years? No. So this is what we're trying to figure out. P stands for the principal, what Levon starts with. Well, we know he deposits 1,000 smackeroonies into the account. So he starts with $1,000. The rate is the interest rate. We know here that there is an 18% interest rate. So we know it's 18%, but remember, we have to convert it to a decimal. So I'm going to be like Beyonce and move my decimal to the left, to the left. And I end up with 0.18 or 18 hundredths. Now, in order for N, that's the amount of times that it's compounded. It's compounded quarterly here. And since quarter means there are four, N is four. Now, T is the number of years. It ends with there's after, we want to figure out the balance after three years. So T is going to be three. Now, all we have to do is just plug in. So A is going to equal 1,000 times 1 plus 0.18 or 18 hundredths divided by 4 to the 4 times 3 power. So there it is, all set up. Now what you can do is, especially if you're using Desmos, you can plug this in. I like to be very careful when plugging into a calculator or a or online calculator such as Desmos as well, just because we have a lot of things going on here. And you have to be very explicit with what you want your calculator or your online program to compute. So I'm going to focus here, if I want to break this down, I'm going to focus in my parentheses first, thinking about PEMDAS. So in my parentheses, I have addition, and I also have division because I have a fraction right here. So if I want to compute this first on my calculator, I can plug in 0.18 divided by 4 and get a value. So I'm going to do that on my Desmos calculator. So I have 0.18 divided by 4 gets me 0 0.045. Then, if you remember, I'm also adding 1. So I get plus 1. Oops. Let's go back. I want to take my answer and add 1 to it. And I get 1.045. So in my parentheses, I'm left with 1,000 times 1.045. And I can simplify my exponent because that's just 4 times 12. 4 times 3, oh goodness, which is 12, huh. Now looking here, I notice, well, hey, this looks like a times b to the x. And that's exactly what this is. Compound interest is a specific form of exponential growth. And this is an exponential function. We have our a, our y-intercept, our initial starting value, our b, our multiplier, in this case, because my value is greater than 1, we know that it's going to show growth. And then we also have my x, the number of times that we are multiplying. So
So I can now plug this into my calculator and get my value. So let's go back to Desmos and we'll get 1000 times 1.045 raised to the 12th power and we get $1,695.88. But remember the problem want us to round to the nearest dollar. So that would be $1,696. So we'll write a final sentence. So Levon's balance in his account will be $1,696 after three years. And there we go. That is the first example. Moving on to the next example. After 16 years investing at an annual interest rate of 1.5% compounded monthly, Vera has $826. Determine the principal value of her investment and round to the nearest dollar. So we're going to start writing our formula. A equals P times 1 plus R divided by N to the NT power. And we're going to identify what values we're going to plug in for a variable. So we have A, P, R, N, and T. So A is our final amount. Do we know how much Vera has at the end of a time span? We do. And specifically because it says after 16 years. So we know that time has passed. So this $826 is going to represent our A. Now, do we know how much Vera starts with? We do not. Specifically in the problem, it says determine the principal value. In other words, P is our unknown. So P, we need to figure out. Our rate, is 1.5%. So notice here how we already have a decimal, but it's a decimal percent. So we need to translate it so it's just a straight decimal. So again, be like Beyonce, move to the left, to the left, everything you own in a box to the left. We get 0 0.015. And we know since it's compounded monthly, that means that there are 12 months in a year. So N is 12. And T, we also know in the beginning that there is 16 years. So T is 16. So now we can plug in. So we have 826 equals P times, because remember, parentheses mean times, 1 plus 0 0.015 divided by 12 raised to the 12 times 16 power. Now for this example, I'm going to show you guys how to plug a part of this in all together in Desmos. So we have 826 equals P. Now if we want to get P alone, notice how we have multiplication here. Well, the inverse of multiplication is division. So ultimately on the right hand side, we're going to need to divide. Now, I think it would be a little, it would be a smart decision to simplify this right-hand side a little bit more, just so it's not as messy and funky if we were to plug it in. So let's figure out if we can rewrite this. So we have 1 plus 0 0.015 divided by 12. So let's try to simplify that. So we have 1 plus, now with Desmos, I'm a big fan, or even with calculators in general, I should say, with using my parentheses, because especially when dealing with fractions, it helps show which part of, the, of your expression you actually want to divide. So I just want to divide my 0 0.015 by 12. So this shows me that I'm not gonna divide the one also by 12, but just this part. And that gives me 1.00125. So in my parentheses, I have 1.00125.
Now my exponent is 12 times 16, which is 192. That's what it simplifies to. So this looks a little bit more manageable to work with. But still, we want to get p alone. And we have multiplication here. So the inverse of multiplication, like I said before, is division. So could we simplify this 1.00125 to the 192nd power? Yes. Would we end up getting like decimals and numbers and stuff? Also, yes. So one way that we can make this a little bit cleaner is just divide it by 1.00125 to the 192nd power. They're equivalent, right? And we'll do what we do on one side, we have to do on the other side. 1.00125 to the 192nd power. So the right-hand side cancels, and all we're left with is just our variable p. On the right-hand, oops, that was the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, we're going to need to divide. So we'll go back to Desmos, and we have 826 divided by, I'm going to use my parentheses again, 1.00125 raised to the 192nd power. So this gives us approximately $650 if we round to the nearest dollar. So P is $650. In other words, the principal amount that Vera puts into her account is $650. And after she compounds it with an interest rate of 1.5%, compounded monthly for 16 years, she ends up with $826. So Vera's principal amount is $650. Great. Moving on to the last example. Irwin's family invested $3,000 in a certificate of deposit, also known as a CD, not like the actual disc, but for him when he was born. The interest rate is 8%. So we have a lot of information right here. We know the family initially invested $3,000, so that's going to be our principal amount. And we know that the interest rate is 8%. Now, the question following says, will the value of Irwin's Certificate of Deposit, or CD, be greater after 15 years if it is compounded annually rather than quarterly? So what we're doing here in this problem is we're doing a comparison. We have all the same values, except the only values that will change will be our N values, the number of times the interest is calculated in the year. So we're going to start with our formula where we have a equals p times 1 plus r divided by n to the n t power. So I'm going to go ahead and just label what my variables would be. So we don't know the final amount for this problem. That's what we're going to need to compare. So we don't know what a is going to be. Our principal is the same for both. They're initially plugging in $3,000. The rate is 8%, which is the same thing as 0 0.08 or 8 hundredths. So if we were to write that as a decimal, we get 0 0.08 or 8 hundredths. Now here's where we change. The n value for annually is just 1 because annually means once per year. Whereas quarterly means four times. So our n on the right-hand side is going to be four. Our t in both cases is going to be 15. So that's how much time will have passed. Now what we're going to do is we're going to plug into our formula. So I'm going to use different colors just so we can see where those numbers go. So we have a equals 3,000 times 1 plus 0 0.08 divided by 1 to the 1 times 15 power. Whereas for quarterly, we have A equals 3,000 
times 1 plus 0 0.08 divided by 4 to the 4 times 15 power. So on the left-hand side, I'm going to simplify. We will get 3,000. Now 0 0.08 divided by 1 is just going to be 0 0.08. So we can add 1 to that and get 1.08. And for my exponent, 1 times 15 is just 15. So that's it simplified on the left-hand side. Now if we were to just go ahead and evaluate it, I'm going to go over to Desmos. We will get 3,000 times 1.08 raised to the 15th power. And notice here we have $9,516.51. This problem specifically didn't say to round, so we're just going to use the hundredths place because we're dealing with money. So we get $9,516.51 if it's compounded annually. Now let's compare this to quarterly. So quarterly, we have 3,000 times 1 plus 0 0.08 divided by 4 to the 4 times 15. Well, we know we're still going to have 3,000. And we can simplify our exponent too. Now 4 times 15 is 60. Specifically, I think about a clock. So there are four 15-minute sections in an hour, which is 60 minutes. Now thinking about our parentheses here, I'm going to go over to Desmos just to kind of show you again how we would plug that into a calculator. So we have 1 plus, I'm going to use my parentheses again, 0 0.08 divided by 4, and we get 1.02. So in my parentheses, 1.02. Now we can go back to Desmos and plug this exponential growth function in. So we have 3,000 times 1.02, whoops, got carried away, to the 60th power. And we have $9,843.09. So now we can compare these two values. Notice on the, on the left-hand side, we have $9,516.51, whereas on the right-hand side, we have $9,843.09. So then we can write our conclusion sentence. So the value of Irwin's CD or a certificate of deposit, will be less if the interest is compounded annually. Rather than quarterly. And we know that because the actual value that we ended up with as our solution was around more or less, a little less than $300 less if we compounded it annually versus quarterly. So what we've kind of noticed here is if we have the same numbers for our principal, for our rate, for our time, but the only thing that's different is how often it's compounded, the more frequently that it's compounded, the higher our final amount will be. So that can be a good thing if you're dealing with what you will be receiving, but not so good if you have to deal with what you have to owe. And that is part two. Thank you for watching.